Hello again, and welcome back to the Daily Bread Bible Study. We are looking at day 22 for Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020, Exodus 21 through 23. So we will be looking at some statutes that God has established for God's people to give them structures so that way they will know how to judge what is acceptable and unacceptable in their society. And uh, we'll see that continued over the next uh, few chapters. We'll see a lot of details about the tabernacle over the you know, continuing end of the book of Exodus and Leviticus. We'll have a whole bunch of you know, statutes and ordinances to observe and guidance from God. And so, you know, before we talk specifically about what the uh, boundaries and consequences are of, you know, that these statutes contain, I'd like to focus and just take a moment to talk a little bit about um, the existence of these things being a little different than what we're used to in our modern day context. So currently I consider myself to be you know, a 21st century person. I'm a male, I'm a Texan, and a Lutheran, and an American. And so all of these things, you know, impact the way in which I look at, you know, these perceived statutes for, that were written in the context of early um, Israel. And so, you know, all of these, you know, different viewpoints, you know, contribute to my uh, perspective on, you know, these particular statutes, whether or not I seek to adhere to them, or whether or not I will question, you know, what uh, they have to offer. So, um, it's important to acknowledge that when you have a difference of opinion, that, you know, some people are trying to be faithful to the God that they understand, and not to belittle, you know, their efforts. That's very true in our society today. I feel like a lot of us you know, either feel belittled for the beliefs that we have or feel that, um, you know, that other people might have very strange beliefs and we want to, you know, judge or critique them for, you know, holding those positions. Um, but, you know, I want to center this conversation around, you know, what it means to be faithful and how it looks to be faithful to God. And so, I think um, it's important to note that being faithful to have boundaries and consequences in your life today that are different than what the biblical you know, communities thought is acceptable. That it is acceptable to come to different conclusions than what the early Israelites did in their day and time around what you know, is the proper way to function. You know, most essentially for us as Christians is the idea of animal sacrifice. That is something that we do not practice, you know, this day and time. And so judging, you know, the early Israelites based upon our view that animal sacrifice is wrong is going to completely miss out on, you know, the faithfulness behind why they are offering animal sacrifices and the reverence that they have to God in doing such acts and maintaining this. So that would just be one example of of that for us. Um, so my hope is that you will not dismiss the wisdom of these laws as inapplicable to our day and time, um, but instead, you know, learn that from their definition of what it means to be faithful, that we can gain insight to our understanding of what it means to be faithful in our day and time. So anyways, uh, so I've talked a little bit about what I think the statutes function as. And I, you know, I'll break it up into two kind of parts with uh, you know, subgroup A and B for the first one and then just the second one. Uh, so I mentioned boundaries and consequences. Those are the two big ones around the statutes that are being instituted by God. Boundaries and consequences. Uh, the first, boundaries. Let me talk a little bit about that. The idea of boundaries are rules or laws or statutes, as I like to state here, that you know, have two functions. The first is to provide freedom to say what is acceptable to do in that society. So what is permitted? What, what can we do? And the second part is the same side, different side of the same coin, is to say what is you know, forbidden, what is restricted and prohibited. 
and to set boundaries on you know how far things can go so you've got freedom and limits and you know trying to answer the question of what is acceptable in our society as far as behavior goes then the second part of that is when those boundaries are violated what's the consequence what happens when someone goes too far and so we'll see you know, coming up in this uh, in reading you know these chapters 21 22 and 23 that they're trying to set these boundaries and these consequences for what happens when these boundaries you know go too far so perfect example of this would be you know Adam and Eve that they function with a sense of a boundary that they are there in the Garden of Eden have freedom to eat any of the fruit trees you know to do a whole bunch of things there in the Garden of Eden but there's a limit in that they cannot eat you know from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and so they break that limit they go past that boundary and they you know violate the statute that God had established there and so what was the consequence of it well the consequence of it is that they were going to have to you know endure mortality they're going to be you know exiled from the garden of eden and that they're going to have to live a painful life with suffering you know birth uh, labor pains as it talks about and you know hard work and labor in the field for men so you know these boundaries uh, come with consequences if they're violated so let's get into the actual discussion of the text in chapter 21 we see laws concerning slaves now i have to admit that it's a little distressing for me as a 21st you know century person looking in these discussions around masters especially over wives and children um, you know, the role of women in their society is not what we have today women had much less privilege and rights to be able to you know do that and most of these laws are directed towards men of how men should interact uh, with one another but uh, so the men are the ones who have the societal power power in this society and so that means that um, you know they get to make decisions around should their daughters be sold as slaves um, and then you know any of their children you can you know send them off to be property of another man through marriage so uh, you know these laws might seem a little strange to our day and time but I believe it's important to remember that these laws are in fact trying to protect women to put healthy boundaries around women to keep them from being abandoned by men who may you know lose love for them uh, and so since they do have less rights than men they are more vulnerable in that that society than men and so the life of women need to be respected too even if they are considered you know somewhat uh, a sense of property so uh, yeah it's hard for me not to judge them based upon our day and time but uh, that's what I see there we have some laws then about restricting violence and to avoid premeditated murder which uh, in my opinion just my bells go off uh, as they're talking specifically about Moses who you know killed the Egyptian there though it was not premeditated so sounds like Moses in some sense speaking to himself in Exodus 21 13 saying if it was not premeditated but came about by an act of God you know this this killing then I will anoint for you a place to which the killer may flee and so this is where you know, also the idea of you know providing a sanctuary town for for those who uh, you know fear retribution and so you know this concept of sanctuary is also here present in this biblical discussion as well too so I find it uh, distressing that the Bible so blatantly kind of condones physical punishment uh, yet I also find it encouraging that if the physical physical uh, punishment is motiv motivated out of anger and violence that uh, it is prohibited and that a slave who you know is able to obtain freedom from an overly oppressive and physically abusive master so you know that's the uh, silver lining that I see in 
you know, this uh, in these laws. So focusing on Exodus 21, we see laws concerning a pregnant woman. Um, if any harm follows, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for br burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. So uh, the significance of what I take out of here is that one, uh, you know, the phrase eye for an eye comes from this biblical passage that, and it's also the first time it's documented in the Bible. It won't be the last time we'll see the phrase eye for an eye. In fact, Jesus deals with this phrase eye for an eye, you know, saying that you've heard it said, um, you know, eye for an eye, but um, in Matthew 5, he says, but I say to you, love your enemies instead and pray for those who persecute you. So Jesus is, um, you know, again, showing within the Bible, you know, that different context and views of what is acceptable behavior are, you know, are um, dictated differently in different uh, context. So, you know, for us as Christians, we're called not to, you know, give violence back to somebody who, uh, you know, has violence towards us, especially um, those that we might consider enemies who are called to pray for them. And so, uh, but in the Jewish context of their society, of you know, the people who were not their enemies, but rather their neighbors, th they were to live, you know, with equity and to um, not take more than what is due, not take two eyes away for somebody who, you know, took one of your eyes or, you know, not um, to go excessive in punishment, but then also to have some consequence for somebody who does violate you and you feel wronged. So uh, moving on in 21 to laws concerning property. Uh, it's very brief, but it looks to me just about the proper handling of cattle and oxen, of how it looks to steward that responsibly so that way people don't get hurt and your property is taken care of. Uh, in chapter 22, we see laws of restitution, consequences of thievery, consequences around disputed ownership. Um, and then we'll see uh, social and religious laws, boundaries and consequences around sexuality, boundaries and consequences around vulnerable people, uh, namely resident aliens, widows, and orphans. And then the, you know, a refrain from chain, train, um, a refraining from charging interest on loans to your neighbors, which in our current context, 21st century United States, uh, we have a you know deeply ingrained system of interest and banking, and that's how our society you know uh, operates heavily around this. But uh, it would be very radical for us to institute you know these types of uh, changes in our society. It would uh, completely debunk our financial structure that we have in our day and time. But um, at the same time, we're called to think critically about, you know, these structures that we have and whether uh, it's faithful to practice them or not. So it's good to uh, have the Bible make us think about our day and time too. So looking to chapter 23, we see conversations around justice for all, of setting boundaries around partiality and, you know, avoiding uh, the perversion of truth. Then we also see something that I think applies to our day and time too, as we in the United States are dealing with, you know, immigrants, that uh, to be very mindful that in Exodus 22, 21, and then Exodus 23, verse 9, it says similar to this here, uh, you shall not oppress a resident alien. You know the heart of an alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. Um, so the Bible is again calling us uh, to have a special love for resident aliens, for those who are not um, citizens here with us, um, because we are reminded that we were once enslaved in the land of Egypt, not as you know citizens with rights, but as slaves there. So uh, the Bible is very um, lumps those in with you know the orphan, the widow, and the oppressed. The resident alien gets. Um, in there as well, too, amongst those who are vulnerable in their society. So uh, the sabbatical year and Sabbath, 
So this is where, you know, I see the you know connection to our society, who which has gotten right away from most of this, but the blue laws that used to exist at the you know in the twentieth century uh, concerning relief and refreshment on the Sabbath, and a reminder to use the Sabbath to worship God alone. Uh, so this is also, you know, the idea that our companies are implicated too, and that if we push people to work twenty four seven. You know, we don't give people time for relief and refreshment, and we need people, you know, to be able to be relieved and refreshed. And also, uh, in their society, it was all about worshiping God and not worshiping, you know, taking this day off, quote unquote, um, this day of rest, not taking it to, you know, pursue your own interests, but to pursue the rest that God calls each and every one of us to. Uh, the annual festivals are then mentioned. A statutes, statutes around the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the Festival of the Harvest or First Fruits, and then the Festival of Ingathering, the Collecting of the Final Fruits. And so then uh, we close in Exodus uh, 23, 19, that section, around a boundary showing respect for a lamb who becomes your meal. The uh, strange phrase, you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. So this is not human children. This is about lambs, um, uh, lamb kids, uh, goat kids, uh, little um, uh, the animals, and you know re have a proper respect for the life that was given, the life which uh, now now becomes your meal, and don't take you know the mother's milk and use that to prepare the animal. So. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a cool little uh, bit of respect for the sanctity of the life of animals there and the connection that we have. Uh, the conquest of Canaan is promised to be done little by little over time, as it says in verse 30. And then also a reminder by God to not be corrupted by the other you know, inhabitants of the land and uh, don't be corrupted by what their boundaries and consequences are set, but choose God's boundaries and consequences. So you shall make no covenant with them and their gods. They shall not live in your land, or they will make you sin against me. For if you worship their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. God is looking out for what will be snares to this young people, who is still establishing healthy boundaries and behavior within their society. And so promising that I will guide you, don't follow their ways. Um, and we will soon look that you know, the ways of the Egyptians are going to fall with the golden calf and God's going to just you know, have to say over and over again, don't worship you know, these idols made with human hands, but worship me, uh, you know, the God who who is known in your heart, the God who speaks and calls to you and delivers you out of slavery in Egypt and beyond. So that's all for day 22. Next week, next time, we are going to look at the statutes concerning worship and all of what God requires concerning the building of the tabernacle. So thank you for joining me for day 22.